What is up, down, and sideways, you absolutely stunning individuals? We are back. It is League on Lock. My name is Aaron. Thank you for joining. As always, just for doing a, another all-timey kind of countdown. We're looking at the best individual performances at a single tournament. So we're talking just a microcosm of one event, one guy who stood leaps and bounds, heads and shoulders above the rest of everyone else and there's a lot to go through over the decade and a half now of competitive league of legends that we've had whether it's domestically or primarily i'll say internationally some standout performances we got seven individual runs to look at and before we get to those i want to say one guy just short of this list i really wanted to put 2019 spring chovy in the LCK, this was the 100 KDA run, and this was the beginning of him starting to, I mean, honestly, completely embarrass head-to-head -head competition. This isn't when he has that Zoe 1v2 performance, but despite getting 3 0 by SKT eventually in those LCK finals, remember that was the King of the Hill format where Griffin only played that basically single best of five throughout that playoff run, but in the regular season, Chovy was completely styling on everybody. This was the full coming out party of this guy being a top tier elite echelon of the tippity top mid laners. So not quite on the list, but again, just wanted to shout out uh, what Chovy was getting done in 2019 spring. But we begin in a world championship and another coming out party. But this was Canyon winning his first world championship ultimately picking up an mvp and this was the beginning of a pretty dominant run of being the best jungler or a top two three jungler in the world for many many years to come and canyon was an absolute gap against other junglers in this event honestly i almost put 2021 uh, worlds in this one as well but you had guys like JJ who had a solid run in their own right but he had the highest jungler KDA the highest gold percentage and damage numbers among all junglers at this world championship event and I think the biggest thing to note um, for him at this event was a different style of jungling you know we're not going to say he completely changed the role as a whole but even going back to what Tian and Ning were doing after back-to-back -back finals MVPs the previous couple of years, it was completely different uh, in terms of Canyon, whether it was that Hecarim, you know, a Kindred pick coming out, an Evelyn in the finals. It was these kind of more carry-oriented, more damage number champions coming through that he was able to completely pop off on. <coughs> Excuse me. And lead Dom one to that first ever world championship he really was just an absolute treat to watch so much so that Suning was forced to you know SFM was pulling out these kind of spicy tank jungle picks it felt like yes that was number one SFM style but it was also some way somehow for them to try and shut down what Canyon was doing I know there was a lot of other star power on that Dom Juan roster that led to that world championship but absolutely the focal point and one of the main reasons why they came away with that title was what Canyon was doing in a, not quite his rookie year, but I mean, essentially a sophomore year for him playing at the level that he did. Big shout out to Canyon. And this is just one individual tournament we're talking about. But when you look at in terms of what this set up for his career, this was definitely the moment where you went, yeah, this guy is for real and going to be around for a long time. Uh, next one on the list is... Maybe I've forgotten about one, and we are going to the Mid-Season Cup in 2020. And if you don't even know what the Mid-Season Cup is, remember, this was peak COVID. We did not get MSI. It was kind of a pseudo-rift rivals between the LPL and the LCK that had the top, I can't even remember if it was top three or top four from each of those regions battling it out in a one-of tournament. But this was... The arrival, the resurgence of Knight on the international stage. And this tournament alone has some of the best individual plays out of him of his whole career. We're talking the 
LeBlanc illusion magic pop off that he has against Dom Juan with the Yumi attached to him. We're talking uh, a turnaround, almost 1v4 triple kill uh, on Corky against, again, some of the best teams in the world. And then, of course, the maybe even more iconic than the LeBlanc play is the Echo Engage that he gets on Faker on T1 to advance them to knockouts. And this, again, it's kind of a forgotten tournament. Doesn't have the same clout or pedigree, of course, as any of the other international events or even maybe winning an LPL title. But Knight was an absolute menace on the Rift in this one. And this is the underwhelming uh, top esports roster you know 369 is basically a rookie at this point Yanji is underwhelming Carsa Carsa was pretty good uh, you know they end up going to the semifinals at the world championship uh, for this run but this was you know Knight stepping out from being that young prodigy into actually delivering on the rift actually having performances against some of these best all time like doing bees at this event faker was there showmaker this is prime peak showmaker that we're talking about and knight was honestly styling on pretty much every single one of them he had the highest kda of the entire event not just mid laners at 8.3 he had the highest gold per minute he was the guy for top esports this is before I think we forget there were eras uh, where Knight was not surrounded by star-studded rosters like JDG or BLG. And even though he maybe wasn't picking up the accolades or titles, this is when he was really showcasing. Yeah, this guy's for real. He's the actual carry. He's gapping uh, a lot of these absolute stars across the rift. So 2020 Mid-Season Cup Knight, if you haven't seen any of those highlights, you don't remember the event at all. Absolutely, go watch some of the runs of the top esports and really the rest of the LPL as a whole were during that event as they kind of beat up, slapped around the LCK. But Knight was the guy to watch at that event. We're cheating a little bit as we go to the number five spot because this whole list is about highlighting, praising individual single tournament runs, but we're going with a duo. We're going Imp and Mata 2014 Worlds. I was hard pressed to honestly choose between, you could even look at Dandy as a whole for this run, but Imp Mata combined, that bot lane was so far ahead of everybody else at that event that it, it's not even fair. It doesn't matter if you go individually, Imp picks up two pentakills. I'm pretty sure there's no way anyone else has ever gotten two pentakills in a single world championship or really tournament and Mata, in terms of vision control, controlling the entire map, far and away the best support at this event. He ends up picking up MVP for those World Finals. And then when you match them together as that 2v2 on multiple different champions, multiple matchups, both sides of what should be counter matchups, they were absolutely bodying fools. There's a reason we talk about Imp and Mata as one of the best duos of all time, despite playing together for such a short, narrow window. It's because you look at specifically a microscope in on that 2014 World Championship run as a whole. They only lost two matches the whole event. One of them coming in those finals against uh, Uzi and Starhome Royal had one of them basically a troll loss against TSM when they were already up 2-0. You could tell they were having a little bit of fun uh, with the boys from North America. But unbelievably dominant run the entire way start to finish. Maybe the only reason they're not higher on this list is because the rest of that team was so damn good. Pawn and Dandy, obviously, in leagues of their own as well when it comes to jungle mid lane matchups. But what the bot lane of Samsung White was doing to everyone else on the Rift uh, at that World Championship. Even if the competition maybe wasn't as high, sure, some of, this, some of these highlights were against AHQ or Dark Passage. Yes, they should be annihilating them, but make no mistake samsung white obliterated everyone they 3-0 samsung blue remember who had beat up on them all year in the lck uh deft was the best ad carry in the world pretty much at that point and imp and mata absolutely styled on them in that series as well so it didn't matter what the competition was they obliterated everybody that showed up to them that's exactly what your boy faker was doing at the 2017 world championship and faker 
almost you wanted to throw 2013 worlds here because he was leaps and bounds ahead of everybody else there maybe 2015 but marin was pretty good there but individually one man against the world you have to take that 2017 world championship because this is really <coughs> the only world championship for skt or t1 where you can really talk about most of the other members underperforming on the biggest stage and it's faker dragging them to victory and obviously everyone thinks about the galio five games against rng where i mean let's face it galio is a pick that can kind of fill the leaking holes of the rest of your team being able to ulti and help the other lanes that's exactly what he did uh in all five of those games against rng but the fact that faker has some of his best carry performances he's still playing cassiopeia he's playing fizz in this meta that was the ardent sensor meta hyper carry ad carries everybody's playing through the bot lane and faker says no man hold my beer i'm gonna pop off on some of these other carries and it's it's kind of poetic that they end up losing the world championship that third game with him on karma you feel like if the meta was a little bit different SKT's probably winning another world championship and it's maybe the most impressive run uh, on Faker's disgustingly illustrious and stacked career but as it is even though they lose in those finals it still remains arguably Faker's most impressive individual run uh, even getting that form of SKT to make it to the world championship was impressive enough he played nine different champions at that event was which was uh tied for the most of anyone at the event he had the highest gold percentage on his team which means they were even in this ardent sensor meta it was faker was the guy because bang was not having one of his best tournaments we'll put it lightly uh in that regard but faker doing it all on not just galio but multiple picks they probably should have lost in quarters uh before even getting to rng so the fact that they made it to finals was a testament to the greatness that is the unkillable demon king now faker is able to drag the carcasses of his former skt teammates but when you have your team all playing at a high level and you have the most dominant solo laner of an entire event talking about the shy at 2018 worlds I don't know if we've ever seen a more dominant solo lane, solo queue style than what he did at 2018 Worlds <clears throat> on the Jace, on the Aatrox. You had years later, guys like Wonder, guys like Soaz and Whippo talking about the absolute dismantling that the Shy gave to both EU and everyone at the event. The only one who kind of held his own or gave a punch back against the shy at this event is smep one of the greatest top laners of all time other than that it was a colossal gap across the board the shy had the highest gold and damage per minute among all top laners at this event and it wasn't like he was you know getting a 10 to 12 cs lead against these guys and then slowly snowballing this game out of control no he's turning around 1v2s the jungler's coming he's gonna kill both of them this guy drew so much pressure at this event that even with jungle help you were still going to be at a deficit which just completely opened the door for jackie love to have a free run at this event rookie to pop off on his own but all the pressure the engine behind that championship run for invictus gaming was 100 percent absolutely what the shy was doing in that top lane this carried into 2019 worlds where he was an absolute menace as well but 2018 he was completely unmatched and again the impact was lasting for years to come for the whew, chill and trigger that some of these guys who were forced to match up against him uh years later they still recount that being the biggest gap that they've ever seen and the way that he played the way that you make a single mistake in the laning phase the game is over he was able to snowball it uh to be completely out of control obviously the meta being uh not tanks we'll say that it was uh, mostly not mostly entirely carry top laters uh that he was popping off on and was blessed to be able to perform on but an absolute treat an absolute masterclass of how to 
single-handedly take over a game. I mean, sure, Ning was there to help him out a lot of the times, uh, but a lot of these individual leads that the Shy were getting were done exactly by that. Individual performances, individual mechanical outplays in the laning phase. This is a different form of League of Legends back in 2018. I mean, we're looking at six, almost seven years ago now at this point, guys, where you were able to take over a game easier as an individual player. The meta was the absolute perfect storm for the Shy and IG to win their first ever world championship. Then there were two. We're sticking with 2018 for this next one. One of, I honestly didn't think we'd ever see a better individual performance than what we got out of Uzi at the midseason Invitational for 2018. Let me just read you some of his numbers across this event. And remember, this is when Kaisa, the year she was released, when she first was becoming absolutely busted. But 39.4 damage percentage. 40% almost of his team's damage for an entire tournament. 8.6 KDA across the entire event, plus 14 CSD at 15. These are ludicrous for like a single series, let alone an entire tournament. Uzi absolutely unmatched uh, on Kai'Sa, on Kogma, on Zaya. What's crazy about how good he was at this event is everybody knew what RNG strategy was. It was protect the president, protect the VIP. We we're gonna funnel every extra CS that we can into Uzi. There were so many games where he had like 470 CS in 38 minutes or something. You're only playing hyper carries, only playing things that will further prop up Uzi. It's a tank in the top lane. It's gonna be an enchanter support for Ming. Beat this guy everything because we know he'll carry the game. And guess what? Time and time again, he did. He carried RNG to their, well, his first ever international event with them. And obviously his trophy case expanded to great degrees in 2018. And if this meta had stayed the same at the World Championship, the Shy wouldn't be on this list. And Uzi is probably on here for his run at the World Championship as well. But the meta kind of shifted uh, more towards those solo laners, less emphasis on the bottom lane, and obviously, we know how 2018 Worlds runs out. They run into the Heimerdinger, does RNG uh, of G2, but yeah, Uzi at MSI. I think the biggest testament to this is Prey on King Zone has himself an absolute historic level of performance uh, as an AD carry at this event, but it's completely forgotten about and brushed aside because Uzi was that much better. And just at an all-time level, this is the best form of Uzi in an obviously Hall of Fame career. This was the highest level that I remember ever seeing him be at. And well, well deserving of being on this list. Well deserving of picking up uh, that MSI title. And just wish it ended better for them at that World Championship. But still, uh, Uzi absolutely, much like Deshai was embarrassing those head-to-head -head rivals uh, in the top lane. 2018 MSI, talk to Doublelift, talk to Prey, talk to Reckless. Unmatched in terms of you make one single mistake and the laning phase is over. Snowballs it over. He's got two, three items and the game is done and dusted. I mentioned I'd never thought I'd see someone have a better individual run at an event than Uzi at that MSI. But Q Zeka at the 2022 World Championship. This is the craziest one on the list because... Uzi, the Shy, Faker, these are guys you expect to pop off at the biggest events. You're accustomed to seeing them take their performance to another level. But Zeka, as a fourth seed, as an unproven commodity, he's not a rookie, but he's still new to the scene. And let's face it, first international event, hasn't proven himself, hasn't really accomplished anything yet in his young career. And he proceeds to come in beat night in the group stage. Go up against Scout in a head-to-head. -head. Solo kill him four times in a game five. Go toe-to-toe -to -toe against Chobi and rack up a bunch of solo kills against him. Outperform him in one of his, his best individual seasons. And then somehow beats the GOAT himself in the finals. Again, it's 
a combination of the meta being perfect where he can play the Silas, play the Akali, play these melee champions, but the level that he was piloting them at against, again, these, these are literally Mount Rushmore of mid laners all time when you're talking Scout, Chobi, Faker, and Knight. We've done lists for mid laners and these guys are all in the top five. So the fact that Zekka was able to do it on the biggest stage against some of the best all-time competition, the level up from what he was doing in the LCK summer split for DRX to what he was doing at that world championship. I, I've never seen a steeper graph if you were to measure it out in terms of individual performance and nobody was embarrassing Chovy and Ruler. Ruler was the best player in the world coming into this event, hands down. And time and time again, you saw Zekka find him amongst the chaos of team fights, pick him out easily, and one-shot him on multiple different champions. He's styling on Chovy some of his most iconic picks over the year. It, this, is, this was the most impossible world championship to predict DRX. Going on that run and Zekka to be at the level that he was throughout I said it confidently uh, after Uzi and MSI 2018, but you will never see a bigger underdog story and a bigger level up, a bigger individual carry performance than we got out of Zekka throughout this run. I know Kingen ends up picking up the World Finals MVP, but... Zekka was the engine as to why DRX was able to pick up that unbelievably miracle level run of a world championship that they did in 2022. I can't see it ever being matched by anyone again. And that's probably a famous last words of me eating those words and somebody will do it. But for now, Zekka sits atop the throne as the best individual tournament run that we have ever seen. But that is it today for League Unlocked. My name is Eric. Thank you to all you beautiful people for hanging out as always. And we will catch you on that flippity flip.